You can see that key moving around. I didn't put oil on that rod. Something might be bent when you when you can move the rod in and out like that and the keys flopping around it tells you something's hanging up in there but that's for a later video or episode okay check that with a little sliver of cigarette paper it's definitely hitting at the back it's probably best if you can't get a pad perfect that it hits slightly ahead at the back because as you press just a little bit harder it'll it'll level down this way if you got a leak at the back it, it's a little harder to get closure uh, with a little extra finger pressure although it should be perfect uh, now these pads these softer pads with felt in them they got a cardboard back and then some lamb uh, so some wool felt in them and then whatever covering the the skin uh, it's gold beater skin it's called it's also uh, called fish skin it's actually cow intestine you should always have a clean rag handy to wipe the edge of the pad quickly because if you leave that glue on there you'll never get it off uh, that's pretty good like that these skin and leather pads, they take a little bit of impression. Uh, you, you dampen them. I'm going to use a little of my reed water. It, it should be cleaner water than this. Uh, some people use distilled water. Some people put a little ivory soap in it to make it a little bit slippery so that it doesn't, so the pad doesn't feel or sound sticky later. And then you put a little spring clamp on it, which you can get from a lot of the suppliers. This one came from Faris Tools. And you leave that uh, generally overnight, or for a while, uh, till it, it dries. And then the pad will have a nice impression that will take the shape of the tone hole. We've already floated it real close, uh, if not perfectly. It will take the impression of the tone hole, and it will uh, that'll make it act like a slightly thinner pad. So you want to start out with it either perfectly level to the tone hole, or if anything, slightly heavier, hitting uh, just ever so slightly more at the back and then uh, with the seat in it it'll come down just a, a slight bit further and that's how you would put in a leather or a skin pad or even one of the uh, synthetics they tend not to hold their seat unless it's a closed key that's held closed by spring pressure then it'll keep its seat uh, if it's an open pad like this low B or the C and you're using the synthetics the greenbacks or the omni pads uh, you'll want to get that as perfect as you can because it won't keep a seat in those types of pads I'm going to check this pad with one of these suction testers. This is a brass one. I've also made up some in, in plastic that's a little easier to make. I'm going to lick my fingertip and cover the hole on the back of the key. Put this gently against the facing of the pad. And that's got fantastic suction. That tells me there's no leak or void in the glue underneath that pad that, that's going to allow an air leak out the side of the key. Uh, the, so the, the, the pad's not leaking around the sides and it's sealing against the tone hole. When I worked in a busy music store and I worked on a lot of student line Selma robos, they used a lot of the cross grain uh, cork pads and I'd often get leaks out the side. You can melt a little beeswax around uh, there to, to close up grain around the side of a pad if you're uh, working for a school on a budget on, on instruments uh, where pads are put in that way. Now I've uh, got this one pad on here and the low B as well. I've got every other tone hole plugged with these silicone plugs that I got from uh, Cubby Oboes. Uh, they also sell neoprene ones like, like this uh, at any hardware store. The silicone ones are a little more flexible so they tend to seal better. I lick them a bit or otherwise wet them so they seal better. This is called the Magna Helic Machine. JL Smith uh, sells them. Uh, Music Medic in uh, South Carolina also sells them. So you can do a little Google search and, and find one of these. And you can adjust it different ways to different ses sensitivity. These uh, gauges and all are from the medical industry. This machine here costs about $400. If you're going to do a lot of this work, you might want to get one. 
And I'm going to lick my finger to cover that uh, aperture pad. And I'm going to close this. And you'll see the needle drop. And you can press around on different keys, different pads, and see which ones make the needle drop the most. And then I'm kind of feel around the oboe pressing on different keys that way. And that'll tell you which pads need uh, changing most. Uh, especially if you're on a tight school budget and you know, you've only got so much money to, of their money to spend, uh, you can easily find out which are the leakiest pads and, and replace those first. You can also just do a, without this machine, you can just do a, a suction test. Lick my finger to cover the bottom for a better seal. And also here because your fingerprints will leak. And I'm going to suck the air out of it and, and lift up on this uh, B uh, key down here. Get the plug out of the top first. That key did not want to come up. That tells me that this pad that I installed is, is working quite well, that it's sealing very well. And I, could, I would certainly, if I was changing pads in this section, if I had these other keys off anyway, I would certainly, when I got this section together, check that before I go putting everything else back on. Because you, uh, you don't want to have to go back in there again after you get all this reassembled. And that will uh, tell you as you progress uh, in putting in the pads on an overhaul or a repad or something, that, that you're correct each step of the way, so you're not backtracking, uh, trying desperately to find leaks that maybe you made early on. Uh, in addition, if you have an instrument all apart for, uh, for an overhaul, it doesn't hurt this wood. This Grenadelle is a very dense, oily wood. It does not hurt this to, be, uh, to stick it in a sink of warm water for a few minutes. You could plug every hole and plug the ends, and you can use a piece of rubber tubing. This has a neoprene stopper on it. Uh, I happen to have a reed staple in there. I drilled a hole through this rubber stopper. It's a little bit funky stuff to drill through, but you can do it. Got that hooked up to uh, this rubber tubing. You can stick this in, in one end of the oboe with everything else plugged up and blow into the other end while it's underwater. And you will see bubbles coming out through a crack or around a, a post or, or leaks through the body of the instrument that aren't pad related. Uh, the kind of leaks that can be very hard to find any other way. First we're going to talk about straightening bent keys. You'll need a pair of pliers that, that don't have uh, teeth on them, something rather smooth jawed. These are just some cheap pliers I got at a hardware store. I got these from one of the repair suppliers, I believe Faris Tools, they're a little bit bigger. I don't use those a lot on oboe, or on the smaller woodwinds, but occasionally. Some of the most often bent keys are the bridge keys. You can grab them here and straighten them. You might want to pad them. I use some of my Tech Cork. It's a rubberized sheet cork. Uh, it's rather tough. You can also use, uh, you can tear little pieces of it. You can also use strips of, of leather cut up an old belt or something, uh, find pieces that fit in there uh, if you don't want to mark the key up, which is a good idea. Some instruments are already in such bad shape it hardly matters. Uh, you might be less likely to break the key if you do kind of a springing motion, kind of like, like that, rather than to bend it all quickly in one stroke. Uh, bridge keys are places that often get bent. And uh, this is another, that the top bridge key here. And I'm going to take that off. And show you straightening that key. I'm using my smooth jaw pliers to pull out the rod. Those usually have to come off together, those two right knuckle keys on the bottom of the top joint. This key, if you'll often on these keys you'll see the peak of the key, the, the point should be a straight line going down and it's just going all over the place. So that kind of determines where you bend it. And I just 
gradually bend it until I, I get each section of that key to look uh, like it's running straight to the rest of it. Again, if you wanted to do careful work on a newer instrument, that this, this oboe is hardly worth fixing, uh, you, you would pad that with, with some of your uh, uh, cork or, or leather. You can also get a little more leverage if you want to put it in a small vise. I've got this small clamp-on vise that I believe I got over at Harbor Freight Tools. I'm going to pad this key. The key's bent down here, uh, so if I put this part of the key in, it'll, it'll leave most of the key to hang on to for a longer lever to make it easier to bend. I'm going to line the key up with the vise jaws right where it's bent. And when I push on it here, it's going to straighten it right, right where, where it's lined up with the, vice, the top of the vise jaws, like that. And you can see that I'm getting a lot closer to straight on that. And I could keep working on, on that for several more minutes and get that really quite straight. This is one of the more often bent keys on an oboe, the, the E flat. You might be able to see that it's uh, not quite going moving back like it should. It always gets hit right here. Uh, that's the part that's sticking up in your way when you bump something against it. So we're going to pull that off of there and show you how I straighten that. Sometimes there could be rust in there that needs uh, to have it pulled apart and cleaned off in oil, but usually that key is, is uh, not working because it's bent. Sometimes you're lucky and can get it off. Sometimes you got to take all this left hand stuff off, but that's not moving by itself very well at all. That should really spin around there. So it's most likely gotten hit there, and I can see it a, a little bit. And so I'm going to turn it over and support it on the, the little C sharp key and down here on, on in two points. And I'm going to hit it with a rawhide mallet. You could use a, a plastic mallet. Or a small rubber mallet. This one I've cut off some so that it would be a little more uh, pointed on one end. Uh, but it's got a spot here. I can use the flat side on here. It's not critical exactly where I hit it. Give it a sharp wrap and look how easily I fix that just with one tap and it wasn't working at all before. So that uh, sometimes it takes a couple taps. Sometimes you got to take it apart. Uh, and, and clean and re-oil, but, but oftentimes that's all it takes to, to, to do that. Okay, so we're going to suppose next that this uh, key here, the B key, which has a long rod going through it, is bent and binding. And since it's not, we're going to help it along. And I promise not to do this to your instrument. Well, it's still moving. Let's hit it a little harder. Okay, so that's taken a hit. It's actually still moving. But let's pull that out and straighten that. This is an old eBay horn that I bought just to overhaul and, and resell to a, for, for a student use. Sometimes it takes quite a bit of pressure to keep the screwdriver in the slot if that's really bent because it doesn't want to turn. Sometimes you got to get under there and pry it a little bit straight with pliers. Uh, you might want to hold the posts so that you don't break out a post if you got to put quite a bit of pressure. So sometimes you need to straighten it a little bit to begin with just so you can get it apart. It's kind of a small slot there. I do have some pliers with some teeth on them that are par they open parallel. They don't open like, like this, but they open like that. And that can really help to grab onto the ends of these rods if you really need some extra pressure to, to pull the uh, stuck rod out. So we've got this uh, rod that doesn't want to work real well in this tubing. 
you can tell about where it's bent you can stick the rod in and it goes pretty easily until the point where it's bent and you can hold your uh, thumbnail there and see about how far that goes and you know it's in this area and you can try it from both directions and it goes a little further so you know it's somewhere in this area here of course uh, you can maybe see that so we need to straighten that out and we can do the same thing as we did before and get it so I'm going to use the pointed side this time and get it a little bit closer you can even set it on the table if there's some points of support and see if it's working a little bit better if you'll turn it to its position where it's the freest then the rod and the uh, key are both bent in the same direction and so when you straighten them it'll tend to straighten both at once that gets it quite a bit better let's say that's as good as we can get at that point and we're going to go over to a little jeweler's lathe here now okay this is a little jeweler's lathe uh, some repair suppliers sell this little headstock here as a, as a bench motor it's got a spindle that runs through it so you can stick rods all the way through and you could work on just the very end of the rod if you had to cut a screw thread or something on it or file on the end and it's not sticking out uh, it's sold as the Vota bench motor uh, I should have a different type of chuck on here I should have a little Jacobs chuck which is this style of chuck uh, this is a little more dangerous it's got parts that are spinning and could crack a knuckle open uh, so I haven't attended to that yet I'm just careful not to stick my hands in there we're going to use some first we're going to straighten out this tubing on this key and we're going to use what's called a wiggle rod I've got this little plastic drawer full of uh, rods I'm going to find one that kind of fits in there just a little bit small to fit through the hinge tubing not yet I've got them in several sizes I've rounded out the end so I don't cut up the inside of the key that works there I'm gonna chuck that up sticking out of there with plenty of room to work I'm gonna tighten up the chuck jaws I've got this little bench motor attached. This is a Sherline lathe headstock. is is uh, the company that makes this out in California. They're very nice little machines. They make an entire lathe outfit. I've got it attached to a jeweler's lathe bed, and I've got all sorts of attachments for this. This is from about 1890. It's uh, quite a work of art. This this little piece of machinery here. Uh, this wiggle rod, you put little kinks in it deliberately and it will wobble around and centrifugal force and and the pressure of that in here is going to straighten this out and somewhat expand it too so it's going to be a little bit larger and like I said I was careful to round the end here so I don't cut up the inside of this key run it at a reasonably fast pace and see how much better the rod fits it's going qu quite a bit nicer it's still not completely I can still see that that's pretty bad I'm gonna work on it this way just a little bit more That's better yet. That's getting a lot better. Now I know the rod's bent too. So I'm going to put the rod in here and show you how I straighten the rod. Tighten it up good so it can't come out. I'm not really crazy about this way of tightening this chuck. Some chucks are, are keyless chucks and you just hand tighten them. 
you might be able to see maybe maybe not that that's flopping around a little bit I've got my rawhide mallet and any repair shop has a rawhide mallet with a little hole drilled in it and that hole fits over the rod and you twist it you, you kind of flex it sideways like that while running at a rather fast speed this is a variable speed motor and I can easily switch speeds I don't know if you can see that on this video but that's quite a bit straighter you can see it's not as blurry looking and that's how you straighten a bent rod we'll see how much better that fits in the key it's a whole lot better I'm going to work on the key itself just a little bit more see if I can get that better yet I think the rods okay at this point I can see that the key is still a little bit bent that's almost there 